Hey, welcome back to Let's Eat with Russ. Merry Christmas. This is Christmas Eve, so I'm prepping this to cook this tomorrow for my family for the holiday. Uh, we're going to do a pretty good looking standing rib roast or a prime rib roast. It's basically the same thing as ribeye steaks. It's just if you slice it into a steak, then it's a ribeye. If you cook it as a roast, the texture and the meat is like completely different. I don't fully understand why it's so different, but it very, it very much is. Um, so this one's about, uh, I don't know what's on that label. This is almost exactly six and a half pounds and a full rib roast is seven bones, but this is a three bone roast, which is going to be plenty for the size of our family. So I got that unwrapped. I'm just going to set that aside really fast while I, uh, get the stuff prepped that's gonna go around it. So I like to use shallots and fresh garlic and of course, salt and pepper. Uh, on mine, I don't know exactly how much shallots I'm gonna need, so I probably bought more than I need. Probably this big one will be enough, but I got some backup just in case. So it's not that different from prepping garlic. I don't know if you've ever had to deal with shallots before, but it's kind of like an onion. You just gotta peel the thing and if you're gonna just chop it finely like I am, sometimes it's easier to just give it a little smash with the knife. Sometimes that'll soften it up and make it easier to get the peel off here, or not. Yeah, I got plenty of shallots. I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time trying to save the outside layer. So whatever, from there, I would just, again, chop off the tail end of it, sort of like an onion, and just basically finely chop it. So um, I'm not going to make you watch me chop something. I'm sure that whoever's watching this video probably already knows how to chop something. And I've already shown what I do with the garlic uh, on a different video. I'm trying to remember which one, to be honest. Whoops. I guess you have to watch all my videos to find the garlic action if you need it. Um, oh, I think it's for the chili, actually. So uh, I'm going to get the shallots and the garlic prepped and not make you sit and watch that. And then I'll get the roast prepped, wrap it up, get it in the fridge. I like to do this the day in advance so it can kind of soak into the meat a little bit overnight. And then we're going to cook it tomorrow. So I'll got my shallots prepped. I went ahead and used both of those shallots and I used most of a cluster of garlic, probably... Uh, I don't know, 12 or 14 cloves. I might not need all of it for this size of a roast, but it won't go bad on me. I'll throw the shallots if there's extra into my eggs tomorrow or something. Uh, so basically just gonna grab my roast. Whoops, still has the diaper on it there. And if it'll stand up for me on one end would be helpful. Eh, or not, whatever. So I'm actually going to do my salt and pepper layer first before I add the uh, the garlic and the shallots here. So I'll just give it a quick most of it's not going to stick to the rib side and sometimes what some people do is they'll actually cut the ribs all the ribs off of the roast and then tie it back together with butcher's twine. Uh, I don't happen to have any butcher's twine here, so I'm not going to do it that way. The other way is you can just cook it in a pan with the rib side down, and that'll kind of serve as its own roasting rack. So it'll, to some degree, it'll keep it from just sort of stewing in its own fat that comes out of it. Obviously, I like to uh, pat in that salt and pepper a little bit. I'll come back around with the pepper after I do the salt. And it's such a thick piece of meat that you can you can go a little heavy with the salt because it's gonna a lot of it's gonna drip off as the juices come out. And if you're crazy about fat, you could cut this fat cap off, but I'd prefer to leave it on so that we get a little more flavor and juice, especially if you're looking to make like a beef gravy with the juices that come out and some you know beef bouillon or whatever. Um, all right, there should be enough salt there. Get the 
this pepper going real quick. And you can just use a jar of salt or a jar of pepper, but especially for the pepper, I like it freshly ground off of actual peppercorns. Again, just my preference. So anyway, I'm just gonna uh, finish up this salt and pepper process really quick. Sorry, I took so much time already narrating. Okay, got my salt and pepper done. Now I'm just gonna kind of give it a rub, essentially, with the uh, chopped fresh garlic. So I'm gonna kind of try to spread this around across it. So I didn't measure it out. Like I said, I just try to and it's not going to want to stick perfectly, so it's probably going to take a little bit of extra effort here. And I can just use the extra that falls off for the sides. And you can use as much or as little garlic as you like. Like I said, I didn't measure it out. I just kind of eyeball it and see what kind of looks or feels right. I'm not trying to make a whole garlic beef roast or anything. I just like to add a little garlic to it. Most of this on the top is going to soak in or fall off of the fat cap as it kind of melts in while it cooks. So yeah, we should have plenty here. Yeah, that's working. And again, on the bottom side with the ribs, it's I mean, I still do it, but it's almost kind of half pointless because one, it's going to be on the bottom side and may fall off, and two, it's just the bones. But I still put it on there anyway, especially because I'm going to wrap it and let it kind of soak in overnight in the fridge. So I'll go ahead and garlic and shallot this rib side as well. Just about through the garlic here. I'll try to do this end a little bit more. Yeah, I only have a tiny bit left. I'll go over right on this side. Yeah, that looks about reasonable to me. I basically do the exact same thing with the shallots. I just kind of get a fistful of them and start spreading them around and trying to pat them in so they stick. And once I get it wrapped with the saran wrap, obviously that'll help everything stick and kind of sink in a little bit. should just about do it and I'll cover this end just a tiny bit with the rest of these guess I won't have any left over for my eggs in the morning that's okay and just to be festive we got this fancy red saran wrap hoping it would, but we'll sort that out. So just, you know, give it a nice little wrap here, and then I'll use another piece just to kind of cover it all the way on the ends. And that's basically it. So we're pretty much prepped and ready to go. I'm gonna let this roast hang out in the fridge overnight. Let some of this seasonings and uh, herbs or whatever it is uh, kind of marinate in there a little bit and soak in. So just in case it wants to leak it all through the saran wrap wrapping or whatever, I'm just gonna put it in a pan, throw that in the fridge and we're good to go. And I'll finish the video and cook this thing for Christmas dinner tomorrow. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. 
Christmas Day. This roast has been sitting out on the counter for at least two or three hours. Again, I like it not to be cold out of the fridge. It's not going to go bad that fast. Don't be scared. So, pardon the pun. This is our big unboxing video. So, let's unwrap this guy. Oh, you can smell those shallots and the garlic. It smells good. So this little pan that I set it in for the fridge, just for space purposes, a little on the small side, so I'm actually gonna put it into a slightly larger pan. And again, you can put it on like a rack like you would with a turkey or whatever, but the ribs kind of serve as their own rack. They'll kind of hold it up mostly out of the, the juices and whatever else. Um, so, we're good to go. I'm going to bake this thing at 325, so it's kind of low and slow, but not super low or slow. Um, honestly, I don't have an exact time. My wild guess is going to be around an hour to maybe an hour and a half, and I'm going to put a remote meat probe thermometer in it. Actually, I might as well do that now. Uh, please hold. I'm going to grab that really quick. All right. Sorry for that delay. Yeah. So I like to use these guys. Um, they're cheap on, Am on Amazon or online or even at Walmart or anywhere, whatever, any store. These little guys are great. Digital thermometers. I don't even use all the features. I don't do all the timer and the settings. Although sometimes it's nice, you can set a specific temperature and it'll start sounding an alarm when it gets there, but I'm a little bit of a sort of semi-meticulous cook, so I'm usually checking it all the time anyway. Um, and always, as always with beef, my target is pretty much medium rare. So I probably, I probably want to pull this out of the oven around 135 maybe even 130 because you're going to want to let a roast like this you're going to want to let it rest for easily at least 10 maybe 15 minutes which is kind of cool because that gives you time to do your garlic bread or steam your broccoli or whatever you're going to do as side dishes while the roast is resting so the way i like to do this because you want to get it kind of in the middle of the meat so Obviously, I can visually see vertically what the middle is, but to get to the middle of the roast itself, what I like to do is measure it above the roast, kind of put my fingers, finger and thumb, about where that would be in the middle, and then I just go in, again, visually, vertically in the middle, and then once my finger and thumb hits the side of the roast, I know I'm in the right place. So, um, yeah, I'm going to throw this thing in the oven. My wild ballpark guess is probably an hour or so, uh, again, at 325. So I'm going to throw this into the oven, and obviously I'll show you how it comes out when it's ready. <laughs> All right. Got this bad boy out of the oven now. And as you can see on our thermometer, we just hit like 124. I'm looking for medium rare to even more on the rare side. So what I'm going to basically do now is just set it in the microwave so it's enclosed, doesn't get a bunch of ambient temperature air. And this thing needs to rest for at least 10 to 20 minutes. And you'll see, because I'll show you when I get ready to carve it, that 124 is going to continue to increase even though it's already out of the oven. While it rests, it'll still keep rising the internal temperature. So um, anyway, we'll be back and you'll see how this turns out. All right, and we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Roast came out of the oven. As I predicted, I pulled it out at... 124 I think I let it rest for a little while now we're at 133 should be good to go it'll probably keep rising if I let it keep resting but we're good to go people are hungry 
and our baked potatoes are ready to rock so I'm going to get those out of this pan just so I have room to work here and I'm going to go ahead and yank out the uh, probe there and you know what I'm just going to stab into the side of this guy with a fork Move that pan that I roasted it in and I'll throw it on its side. Then I'm going to slice the bones, the rib bones, off of the roast itself. So far, that looks like just a little bit of all right to me. So then I would lay it back down, flat down straight. You can see, as, as I always say, my target is medium rare to rare. That looks nice and pink, like good prime rib. So those ribs will be great. They're actually really good ribs just to eat on their own. And of course, whatever meat's left on them or just the bones themselves, my dog is going to be very happy. So Merry Christmas to her. I'm going to move these ribs out of the way, put them over here. If I can get that one off room with the fork. So essentially, again, if you got a decent knife and a decent fork, you just, you know, oh, do you want the end cut? All right. There's your end cut. That looks like prime rib to me. Geez, I even got the uh, temperature a little higher than I would like to. I wish it was even a little bit more rare than it is, but that's pretty, pretty good looking prime rib. It's pretty much falling apart. The juices are still pink. It looks pretty good to me. And again, for this particular video, this is Christmas dinner. So, Merry Christmas to everybody. Oh, that looks perfect. We're going to do some garlic bread and some steamed broccoli and all of that stuff. And like I said, we got the baked potatoes already done. Those are rocking. So, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.